Hello everyone, I'm FMZ and this is episode 45 of An Englishman Abroad, A Journeyman's Story. It is the end of the season. We've got six results to run through as well as the end of season awards. Let's get to it on the intro. And we start today's roundup with a 3 0 win over Spenzia. Let's take a look at the goals from the game. All done in the first half with three goals. Moses Keane with the first one. Benature with the work on the right hand side with a cross to the far post. A little header. Goalkeeper should do better. He's probably glitched out there, hasn't he? But never mind. That was 1 0. Here is the corner for the number two. Cristiano Ronaldo with the header for the second. And Bonucci wrapping the result up with number three with his left foot hammered into the net. And that was a very significant result, that one over Spenzi, as it was the result that secured the title. So the title is done and dusted. Let's run through the rest of the results. So we start the extremely long lap of honour with five league games left to go with a win over Kievo. Let's take a look at the goals. With Le Celso finally starting to find his feet, he opened the scoring. Ronaldo played it to him and a lovely shot from the edge of the box arrowed into the bottom corner for 1-0. Cristiano Ronaldo again with another penalty. I've lost count the amount of penalties he's got this season for number two. Chievo did pull one back late on in the game, but it wasn't enough. Ball across into the middle eventually for Lucic to put the ball in the net but it wasn't enough to stop us winning against Kievo. Now, I mentioned in the last episode that it was Napoli and Roma were the two teams that we hadn't beaten this season. We haven't beaten Roma, so there's another team to add to the list. It's a small bugbear for the season, but let's take a look at the goals from the game. Another Cristiano Ronaldo penalty after two minutes to put us 1-0 up. The lead didn't last long, though. Roma were level on four minutes for Maranaro as he scored to make it 1-1, and that is how it finished. Moving on to a comfortable 2-0 win over Cagliari. Goals from Wilson and another penalty from Ronaldo. It's going to become a theme today, I think. Let's take a look at the goals from the game. Wilson with the opener on 28 minutes. Played the ball wide to Ben Chilwell, so he started the move, and he finished it with his right foot into the bottom corner for 1-0. And there is Cristiano Ronaldo's penalty. Another one nicely tucked away to make it two and to complete the result. A rare blank for the season against Genoa. A nil-nil draw, not for the one to trying as you can see. And it could prove all important to Genoa because they desperately need the points down the bottom, but it was disappointing not to beat them nonetheless. And we wrap the season up with a Moses Keane goal as we beat Inter by one goal to nil. Let's take a look at the goal. In the 68th minute, a very keenly contested game, but this has to be my goal of the season. What a run from Keane. What a finish as well, as we rounded off the season with a 1-0 win over Inter. So after all the results, after 38 games, here is the final Serie A league table. So we start at the top with ourselves, obviously 93 points from 38 games, only one defeat against Napoli. Milan finished second, Napoli pip Inter into third. So that result on the last day cost them third place. And that means they have to qualify for the Champions League as well, I believe, Inter. Lazio in fifth position. Chievo, brilliant, in to the top six. Udinese missing out on Europe altogether. They kind of ran out of steam right at the end of the season. Roma picking up a place in the Europa League as well. But they had a bit of a terrible run towards the end of the season. Fiorentina finally making it into the top half. Down at the bottom. So Salah and Tana were already relegated with 18 points. Empoli have gone with them as have Genoa. Despite the point against us, it wasn't enough to save them. Spenzi have, have stayed up by a point. Which is credit to them. Now the awards rolled in pretty quickly after the conclusion of the season. So Jose Cancelo won the Serie A Player of the Year. Very consistent performer throughout the season. 
I'm sure you'll agree. There may have been worthier winners, you might think, but Cancelo won the award for the player of the year. Moving on to the team of the season now. We had, we had seven players in the team of the season, including the back five, which tells you all you need to know, really, about the season that's just gone. Arthur and Cristiano Ronaldo were the other two. From our perspective, the rest of the team was made up from the Milan clubs, so it was very much a three-team race in the team of the season stakes. The awards themselves for Serie A were very interesting. So Wojciech Chesney finished second in the goalkeeper of the year. Moses Keane finished second. Cristiano Ronaldo isn't even in the striker of the year, which is amazing. But what is truly amazing, the defenders of the year got first, second and third with Cancelo winning out over Bonucci and Chilwell. Now on to our end of season awards and Juan Cancelo has picked up the fans player of the year with nearly 50% of the vote. So fair play to him. Harry Wilson's goal against Brescia in the Coppa Italia was voted as the goal of the season. Let's take a look at the goal of the season. Now I know it's from the Coppa Italia because Brescia are in Serie B. So let's take a look at Wilson's goal. Can I remember it? It's a lovely curler. Yes, I can. The curler into the top corner. Yep. Worthy winner of goal of the season, most certainly. Moving on to the signing of the season. Bearing in mind, we made lots of signings. It was Kiar from PSG that picked up the award. So GG's to him. And the young player of the season was Moses Keane at 22 years of age. He did set Serie A alight, especially with that goal against Inter, which is my personal favourite for the season. So moving on to the statistics. So Cristiano Ronaldo with 22 goals is the top scorer from our perspective. Wasn't the top scorer overall in Serie A, but 22 goals is still a great effort. Cancelo was our best highest average rating player. Keane had seven assists. Benatur had the best pass completion rate of 95%. Cancelo also won the most man of the matches as well as the most yellow cards. And yes, he got the most red cards as well along with Camacho. So here is the season review. So we won Serie A, obviously, as you've just seen. Lost in the quarterfinals of both the cup competitions we were a part of. Match of the season was against Spenzia in December. Big result that was for us. Moment to forget, the only game we lost, in fairness, during the league season was a defeat to Napoli. The Allianz Stadium was 98% full through the season and we used the highest amount of players with 31. Now, it's interesting in Serie A that the managers get to vote for their manager of the year and they voted for me. I didn't vote for myself, obviously. I voted for the care of our manager because, as you've already seen, they had a really good season to finish as high as they did. But I was delighted to pick up the award, so that's the second manager of the year award for me after picking one up at Betis and the first trophy in the cabinet, which I'm delighted about. So you might be wondering what happens next. Now look at Real Madrid. Solari is in trouble. He has a precarious state. They only finished fourth in La Liga. So the intention is to stay with Juventus because I've got unfinished business with the Champions League. However, if the Real Madrid job becomes available, I'm going to apply for it. It's too good an offer to turn down that one. To manage Real Madrid, a club that I have a good affiliation with. It's a club that I love. Tottenham are always going to be my first love, but Real Madrid are a side that I admire and when we played him in the Champions League and beat them, I should mention in real life, I was over the moon to actually do it and to see it live was brilliant. So that's the intention for next season. If Real Madrid don't come a-knocking, then we'll be stopping. And you're going to have to wait and see how that pans out, aren't you? Ooh, cliffhanger. I like a cliffhanger. But that is it for our first Serie A season a trophy finally in the cabinet after four years. Thank Christ for that. I thought we were going to do the entire journeyman and not win a sodding thing. But Serie A secured at a canter in the end. I did say it was probably going to be when rather than if. And I said that a few months ago. So glad to be right. And, you know, we were pushed a little bit of the way right at the beginning. But once we got past sort of November, December time, we were off into the distance and there was no catching us. So, if you've enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and would like to do so, please click the subscribe button down in the corner. That was episode 45 of An Englishman Abroad, A Journeyman Story. I'll see you next time, wherever we might be. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Goodbye.